This time I'm in the west of Ireland chasing snipe with Daniel and Brian O'Flaherty from Curly Mountain Outdoors. I'm in the south of France hunting wild boar under moonlight at the main Bois de la Ganiste. And I know we promised that we'd have more cartridge tests with drones. That's not gone very well. Probably not too bad though. So you'll have to wait till next month for that one. But welcome to Field Sports Ireland. Over on the west coast it's rugged, windy and here, soggy. I've been invited out for a bit of bog trotting, looking for some of the fastest and most challenging wild game we have, the snipe. This time I've trusted the beautiful Benelli 828U to my good friend Daniel to have a go with and I'm going to be trying to film these speedy birds as they spring up from the grass. The irony of this is, Daniel is a professional cameraman and I'm a professional shooter. Hmm. Maybe we haven't thought this one through. Here you go. And again. And again. Go, 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 go. Okay. The season for snipe runs from September the 1st to January the 31st. And right now it's early October, so we're right at the beginning of the season. Snipe are a migratory bird and tend to head this way later in the winter. It's a wee bit early for the migratory birds, but Ireland is one of the few countries where the snipe winter here and breed here. So England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales, parts of Norway, northern France have a lot of breeding populations that can also winter here as well. But, you know, we, we obviously get all the, the snipe flying south from Iceland, the Faroe Islands and Scandinavian countries as well push this way. So. This early in the season, we're, we're likely to be just bumping into Irish birds. And uh, later on, then we'll, we'll see the higher numbers when migratory birds land, you know. Do you like Irish birds? <laughs> Prefer farm birds. <laughs> Don't put that on it. <laughs> Snipes spend most of their time on the ground between the long grass and these quagmires. And with their excellent camouflage and small size, they're almost invisible. So it's essential to have a well-trained dog to help sniff and flush them out. We're using Bracken, and she's an expert at this sort of hunting, even though she's heavily pregnant at the moment. I think the majority of Irish people, or probably the majority of the hunters who hunt snipe, do it to see their dogs working more than anything. Every time that dog stops or looks like it's going to come on point, it's, it's as good as it gets for me, like, it's just really exciting shoot. Good boy, 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 there you are, first bird of the season. When I came across there, I thought that uh, a sniper just went just before we came across and I thought that uh, she was sent in the ground scent and then a uh, the common mistake where you caught your ear off guard but we managed to get the bird so first bird of the season, very happy with that. It's uh, probably the most exciting hunting you can do over pointers I think. 
and I think a lot of snipe men really are are into it for the dog work and of course incredibly difficult shooting and I'm sure you'll see for the rest of the day you don't you don't get everyone and um, we'll have to get another few because they're good eating but you need more than one on your plate time to bring out pepper he's a bit younger and has more energy and that's not always a good thing yeah the the bitch is is uh, heavily pregnant so I knew we'd only get a short run over. I can see she's quite tired, so I've let the younger dog off, and um, he's very fast, but he stops. He stops on snipe very well, so we'll see. There's not a lot of birds, you know. Normally, they bump into a couple of birds early in the season like this, and it it clicks with them again, and they slow down and start looking for them. Good boy. So we'll see how we go. Daniel's father Brian has been breeding his own pointers and setters for this sort of shooting for over 40 years and these dogs are perfectly suited for this type of hunting. The idea is these dogs quarter the ground with the wind in their face until they smell a snipe. Then they set, indicating where the bird is, the shooter comes in behind the dog and they walk forward together slowly until the bird flushes. This gives the shooter the best opportunity to make a clean kill. Sometimes, even with the best nose in the business, it's not always a success. Don't even mind if there's a bird there anymore. <laughs> good girl, good boy, come on. Come on. Come on, Pepper, come on. Come on. Be alone enough. Come on. Good girls. Good boys. Easy, easy, easy. It's back on something and I'd say that's possibly ground scent. You can see when they're wagging the tail they're, they're not sure and it's normally ground scent rather than air scenting the birds. The game of low return. <laughs> This is my first time using the uh, Benelli 828 and it's very light, like that's one major advantage when you're uh, walked up shooting of any kind, you know, you're carrying the gun more than you're shooting it and you wouldn't know you have this in your hands and I mean, it's lovely to shoot, very low recoil off it. I tend to get recoil in the face so this, um, this rubber removable pad on the top helps with that a lot but I didn't feel it. as. as Normally when you're shooting birds you never really feel the recoil anyway, but I think it's a sweet gun. Been um, hunting snipe all my life and something I'm very passionate about. It's uh, definitely one of the most sporting birds you can, you can go after. The, um, the bag numbers are normally low, but it's more about seeing your dogs working. I think the tradition in Ireland really was it's, it's sort of not that efficient cartridge wise for the amount of food you get out of it so it was easier to shoot a slow pheasant than, um, than lose a lot of cartridges trying to shoot these but I mean as far as dog work is concerned and then if you get a, a few of these it's, it's as good as it gets hunting wise for me anyway and as you can see by the dog work I mean it's just the most exciting shooting to just stand and look at them even if they're there's no bird there. So uh, there's the payoff. Well, I have to say a big thanks to Brian and Daniel for having me along on the bogs. And it's probably one of the hardest filming jobs I've done with Snipe getting up in four and five different directions. It was very difficult to film the ones that Daniel was actually shooting, but I did manage to get a couple on film. And we'll see more from those guys later in the year when we get back out with them on Snipe and Woodcock. And now I head to France and watch out for a tongue-in-cheek tribute to Mr. Paul Childerly in this one. Well, we're doing something a little bit different this month, folks. I've come to southern France for some 
late autumn sunshine and one of the most common questions I get asked by people in Ireland and the UK is where can you go to shoot a wild boar and it not cost the earth. So that's why I've come down here to a guy called Soren Rasmussen and Soren's company Kyler.fr provides all types of boar hunting. We're on a management hunt this, this few days and we're just going to be shooting some middle-aged pigs, some sort of half-grown pigs but you can shoot some really big trophies here, wild boar, red deer and fallow bucks. This area is fenced and Soren makes no apologies about that but it's a massive fenced area. I mean other than driving in the gate you're not going to see the fence again. It's densely forested with these green oaks and they provide a perfect habitat and a big food source for boar. So he's just said to me he has a big population of boar and he really needs to take out some middle-aged pigs. So that's what we're here to do and just being dropped off at this beautiful place lovely box seat looking over a lake about 60 yards from me woods all around it so if the boar come out they're going to be nice and close hopefully we'll get some good footage and get some boar on the deck one thing Soren did say he's a massive fan of Paul Childerly that's why he's kitted me out with a Sacco Zeiss combination for you Paul. I know he'd be proud of me. I'm self-filming this trip so we've got the GoPro here, tripod here that this camera's going on. Got various other camera equipment here, binos and ammunition. So we've been sat here now for just about half an hour and things have just calmed down nicely. It's just starting to feel like about that time when boar are going to come out. That is a beautiful fellow book. It's by far the best one I've ever seen on the hoof. He is stunning. There's a boar come out down the track. He's about 200 yards from us. <laughs> Little bit of a rush when I saw him. Hopefully, hopefully they'll come closer. Heard a shot from one of the other guys. It's about a kilometer down. So hopefully we won't go hungry tomorrow anyway. Still no pigs here. Just those couple of fellow that came earlier. Beautiful book. And a, a pig a long way down the track. But the wind is just swirling here. That's what spooked those fellow. And it's getting really quite breezy now. But Hopefully they might, might just stick their head out long enough. The wind has just totally dropped now. All of a sudden, literally just bang. Wind is gone and it's just gone really, really, really still and quite humid now. Um, I've just heard another shot from one of the other guys. So there's obviously pigs on the move. Light is just going. It's starting to get to that point where you just feel like you're gonna, you're gonna get some action. Absolutely stunning sunset that is, just incredible.
just had just had ducks come in on the pond. I frightened that boar off. I don't think he'll go far though. We've got the moon just coming up now. I'm really, really frustrated that I didn't shoot that boar quicker. to say that was absolutely incredible I was, I was really struggling to get the camera on the pig that I knew I could shoot um, those young pigs were just running around running around playing there was a coiler there that kept chasing them and um, it was so exciting I picked the gun up and put it down probably 50 times and just as I got the camera on picked the gun up they moved they had a little run and oh, pressure was really starting to build it's it's really not easy to film your own hunt as I'm sure a lot of you know you've tried to do it and it's it's really not easy but they just stood three of them pretty close together and I was like right the three are there just take one that's broadside picked up the gun quick as I could and just squeezed on the shoulder and wow the adrenaline is just coursing through my veins now they were out for five ten minutes half an hour ago and I just decided which one was the one to shoot. It's, it's really difficult to tell the size in the IR on the camera and through the scope with the moonlight it's, it's quite difficult as well but I could see that what was a coiler and what was a, a sow these were just a bit bigger than piglets which are, are perfect to take. <laughs> really 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 chuffed about that it was, it was so exciting after three four hours of sitting here like when it actually happens it's, it's just really really exciting. Well, that really got the blood going. Oh. Oh. I'm absolutely shaking after that. That was so exciting. I've, I've never shot under moonlight before with a rifle and it's, it's quite hard to trust yourself. So I, I kept getting on the target. I knew I was right, starting to squeeze the trigger and then just, oh, having a little doubt. Um, so eventually I just said, yep, yeah. you could see them taking steps. So I knew which way they were walking, so I said, yeah, come up the front leg, and I know that's the front of the animal. And I just squeezed the shot, and that one's gone down on the spot, but yeah, oh. Well, there we are, two, two beautiful young animals. And yeah, really exciting hunt for me. I've never shot under the moon before, and that was a new challenge, and I actually found it very exciting. And like to think that yesterday I was in Ireland in eight degrees and rain, and 24 hours later, I'm in the south of France shooting wild boar, just a, a quick flight down, a short drive, a really, really, really good value hunt. It's just a, yeah, it's a real gem of a find for me and I think I'll, I'll definitely be coming back here again. Well that's it for this month, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed those two pieces, quite a variety of species and of weather from the south of France to the west coast of Ireland but we'll see you again four weeks today. Bye.